To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. Well, if you listen to the podcast and to the radio show, you know that my Interest, my professional career, and my academic interest is in strategic communication. So there's a special place in my heart for anybody who is a specialist in communication because I believe that's how you change the world. And I believe nothing happens until you learn to express your message in a way that people can understand and take action. So I'm always excited whenever I have a fellow communication professional on the show. And we have one today. I am speaking with Helen Tremethick. She is a brand voice strategist and a copy coach whose values-driven approach to communications helps scaling entrepreneurs and small businesses move their businesses into the next sphere. Helen is the CEO of the Communications Distillery, a boutique branding studio located in an old farmhouse in the middle of the Canadian countryside. Helen, welcome to (laughs) Rebelpreneur Radio. Thanks, Ralph. Glad to be here. We were talking offline about how it seems like communication professionals, strategists, we like to be in our fortress of solitude where (laughs) we can kind of look down on the rest of the world from a position of of uh, analysis and kind of create the messaging and the branding and, and the words that are going to change worlds, change lives. And so you're there in your old farmhouse in the middle of the Canadian countryside. I'm here in my compound and we are just doing what it is that we do. So it's really cool to connect with you. And I'm so glad that you can spend some time with us today. Tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get started and how did you get interested in communications? Yeah, thanks, Ralph. You know, I think I think I've always been interested in communications. I was writing stories right from the get-go. But, you know, it's funny. In, in hindsight, I think I was always on my way to the communications distillery. But growing up, getting jobs, it just didn't feel like it at the time. And I think I'm not unusual for most entrepreneurs. I think most of us are multi-potentialites. We love to learn new things. We're interested in a variety of industries. It's part of the reason why we've taken on the big challenge of running our own business is because we like a challenge. We like a big problem we can bite into. And you know, like many entrepreneurs, I've held all sorts of jobs. I was a medicinal tea apprentice. I've been a head baker at a cookie company. I've been an executive director of a nonprofit. And so for a long time, it felt wishy-washy here and there, like I couldn't focus on one thing. But here's something I've noticed. Everybody has a clear trajectory. Everybody. You have always been you. I have always been me. And it's just about finding the through line or or the pattern. So I went to college for radio and television broadcasting. Very, very similar to what I'm doing now in the communications distillery. Then I went to university for international development and anthropology. So I, I literally studied who people are, the circumstances they find themselves in, and how to communicate clearly and effectively. So every job that I ever had, even though it seemed on the surface like I was here or there or another place, every single job was with a company that I believed in and whose message I was able to share with my world. And it was just about stepping back and looking at the pattern. Mm -hmm. And that's something I do with a lot of my clients as well, looking at their bios and, and pulling out, getting a bit of an eagle eye perspective on it saying, okay, who have you always been? Hmm. That, that is that resonates with me so much because I think my resume, my history, is to the outsider looking at it. It looks like it's all over the place, mm-hmm. um, and and so a very similar uh, experience. 
on this path towards um, specializing in communication and especially building, branding, scaling a business. You seem to draw from a lot of different experiences and it, it's, it seems to make no sense while you're going through it, but then you take a step back and you realize what you're doing now, everything you've done up until this point prepares you for what you're doing right now in this moment. And that's really a great feeling, isn't it? Exactly. And you've always been interested in these same kinds of problems, these same kinds of circumstances. And that's what drew you to those jobs in the first place. It just didn't seem so um, so clear at the time. Absolutely. I, I think that is probably the experience of a lot of the people that are listening right now who are in the process of starting, building, scaling their business. And so you you have fine-tuned your craft down to the science and the art, the art and the science of communication. Specifically, you work with people in the area of brand voice strategy. Tell us a little bit more right. about what that is and why is that important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So brand voice strategy is essentially, you know, our taglines are very similar, a rebelpreneur radio and the communications distillery. I help people find the words they need to get the clients they want. There you it's go. not just about, <laughs> it's not just about putting words up on your website. And most of us don't get into business because we want to write. I mean, there are some of us who do, um, but the vast majority of us don't. And yet our businesses require a whole lot of that from us. So what ends up happening is that we create a website, we throw some words up there, we need it up there. Our websites are our 24 seven salespeople. So they need to be up and live almost as soon as we're running our businesses ourselves. Hmm. But after a while, our businesses become a bit of a kid's art project. There are <laughs> words slapped together, copy pasted from somewhere else. We went through a phase where we were mimicking someone we admired, and then we and eventually it just comes becomes all cobbled together and no longer really representative of who we are or how we've grown. Mm -hmm. And and so brand voice strategy gets you back to that that essence, that foundation. Who are you? Who do you serve? And how do you communicate that clearly and effectively? Interesting. Now, I, I usually work with people on their websites because websites are a really great playground for this kind of material. But once you nail your brand voice, once you have that roadmap in place, you can take that anywhere from your website through to your social media, your newsletters, your blog posts even in-person conferences or interviews that you're having on podcasts. Mm, very interesting. So from a design standpoint, um, I, I know that web designers used to say something like you need to update your web design every three or four years to stay current. I don't know if that's true or if that's just a way for them to get you to spend more money with them, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it raises a question. Do do we need to audit our words on a on a regular basis to because when you were talking I thought about how things change we evolve our business evolves our audience evolves and we may be a com a completely different persona today than we were a year ago 2 years ago and if most websites take 3 or 4 years before they go back to redesign them I'm wondering if the language that we use to describe who we are and who we help, if that needs to be updated at least that often or even more often. What do you think? Absolutely. I'm really glad that you brought that up because it's something that I recommend to my clients quite regularly is that we look at our copy as a bit of a strategic plan, the, the way that we look at a strategic planning process, that when we're looking at our big goals for the year, it doesn't take that long to read through our website and see if it's still in line with who we are, see if it's still resonant, see if it's still representative, and see if it's still speaking to the audience that we really want to attract for that year. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. I'm, I'm not saying this so that the rest of us brand voice strategists and copywriters 
competitors can get entrepreneurs to buy more stuff from us. <laughs> but but I, I do believe that it can be part of our planning process where we take an hour once a year to just go through the site and and see not fix not anything just see see what's working see what isn't working and create a plan from there and yes absolutely there will be times where you need to do a big overhaul maybe you're doing a pivot maybe you're doing a rebrand there's there's going to be an impetus to do a copy overhaul but for the most part, those in-between sessions, we just need to, to make sure that it's still aligned with what we're doing. Because again, our websites are out there 24-7. Like they better be the best salespeople that we have on our team. And very often, I think your website is probably a better salesman than you are. <laughs> <laughs> because when when people are put on the spot, they tend to, um, and unless they are born salespeople, which I don't believe there is, there is any such thing, we either have the skills of being able to sell ourselves or we don't. But one of the great things about your website, and specifically the language that you use on your website, is that it can do the selling for you without you having to be personally involved, at least in the early stages of marketing attracting people, converting visitors into leads. At some point, you've got to talk to them. Uh, but it seems like if you've got your message and your brand voice strategy in place, at least you are attracting the right kinds of people. And I would even dare say you are attracting the people that will be easier for you to talk to when you do eventually get into a conversation with them. It won't be a struggle. It won't be difficult. There will be some so a match that has happened because you have magnetized your site with a great brand voice strategy. Does that make sense? That's exactly right. I like to talk about it, the sales conversation happening when somebody lands on your website, whichever page they land on, that's when the sales conversation starts. Perhaps it started on a social media post that dropped them into your, your website. But as soon as they there's that initial touch point, that's when your sales conversation starts. And the more genuine you can create your brand voice, the more representative it is of your brand values, of who you are, the more consistent your message is going to be throughout that sales conversation so that when they do get on that call, you're not talking about whether or not you're a right fit anymore. You're talking about how you're going to work together because oh, yeah. your website has done all that work for you. That's very powerful. And, and a discussion about how we are going to work together is a lot more comfortable I would think then a conversation about, are we a good fit? The website Absolutely. has already done that. It, it's already had that conversation virtually. And, um, that, that is really powerful. That is powerful leverage. So you work with what, what size people do you work with and who benefits from this? People say, well, I'm, I'm just a small business. I'm just one person is, mm -hmm. is how does brand voice really impact them and why is it important for them? Even large companies, they spend millions of dollars on this. How does it help a small business or even a solopreneur? Mm -hmm. Good question. So I have done work with uh, big multinational companies. We step into a big room, there's a bunch of people around the table, and we try to find that piece that is similar in what they feel like the brand represents. And I got to tell you, it is much, much harder to do that work, to take a committee mm. of ideas and distill it down to the essence than it is to work with somebody who is really passionate about what they do. So I, I work with visionaries. I work with the visionary of the company and whether that is a solopreneur and somebody who is happy to keep their business small as a solopreneur or somebody who is still at the forefront of a bigger team, I work with that person who has that vision for their business because, because our businesses are essentially an extension of who we are. And we see that in 
you know, multinational CEOs, but we see it more clearly in solopreneurs and people who operate small teams. So it benefits, it benefits those solopreneurs and those small business owners much more greatly because firstly, they don't have a team of salespeople who are, you know, out there pounding the pavement or doing the outreach. They don't have a social media team. So they need to get their website, their social media aligned and consistent as best as they can so that they can do the work of those extra people. Hmm. But also because, because once you know what you stand for, once you have that really solid foundation, that is a place that you can grow from. I love that. When you're working with people, and, and I really understand, I think better based on your answer, that it's easier to tap into the passion and the values of a small business owner or a solopreneur mm-hmm. or a rebelpreneur than it is to try and tap into the corporate values of a, of a committee, uh, of, mm-hmm. of a board, of a, a, a big multinational brand that a corporation really isn't. A, a person anyway, it, it's, it's a legal, yeah. it's a legal structure that's we're creating this false person, uh, to protect the real people from liability. And we have to give this false <laughs> person a, a name and a brand and a personality and values, but there really is no person. So it's, it's a, I, I would imagine, well, and I don't have to imagine in my experience, it has been more difficult trying to accomplish that. It's not impossible, but it's more difficult to accomplish that with a big corporation than it is with a small business owner or a rebelpreneur. Um, mm-hmm. Having said that, it's still not an easy process because you have to figure out who people are. Um, mm-hmm. What what would you say in the people that you work with? What's the biggest obstacle? What's the common problem that you have to help them solve before they can move forward with this? Oh, overwhelm. It's, I would say it's overwhelm. It's not, this isn't really about words. It's about livelihood. And I think the vast majority of people who come to me, whether that is through one of my coaching programs or whether it is for a copywriting project, they are tired and overwhelmed, and they really just need to get it right. So the work, the work is a big discovery process. And this is this is where that multi potentialite stuff comes up really well is that, (laughs) that, that I love learning about new industries, I love learning about new things. And so we dive deep into, into the work that they do into why they do that work, into what they were passionate about in the first place. And that helps trigger a, their understanding of their business model, whether that's working for them or not. And it also helps bring back some of that that excitement and passion that has, has usually been put to the side a little bit because they've been so overwhelmed with the day-to-day. Mm. Once you get this stuff right – then it's just a matter of checking in to make sure that it's still right. So it, you're right. It is that it is a big process, but it's one that with the right tools and with the right methodology can be done step by step in order to, to decrease that overwhelm. You know that your website's working for you. You know what you're going to say on your next blog post. You know who you're talking to. And that, that can really liven up a business. Wow. You know, everything you said makes so much sense. And and part of the overwhelm is not knowing what to do. Mm -hmm. It's not knowing what to say. It's not knowing the right thing to say or the right thing to do. And so just having some clarity in that and actually getting something done uh, really contributes to eliminating or at least mitigating some of that overwhelm feeling it, it's hard to move in a certain direction if you're confused. Uh, so <laughs> what can people begin to do, maybe even on their own right now, to begin thinking and aligning their their thought process with this idea that we're going to go to work on our brand voice by tapping into who we are? What can they begin to do uh, to see some 
improvement in this area yeah. or at least begin taking steps in the right direction? That's a great question. Yeah, because it's it's not just about it's not just about the right thing to say. It's the right thing to say for you. Yes. And that's what's really key is that there's all sorts of templates out there where you can fill in the blanks, but then what ends up happening is that your words sound templated and they don't sound alive and engaged and genuine. So the work that I I do always circles back to my Captivate methodology. So you, you mentioned conversions a little bit earlier. And and in the world of marketing, we we talk a lot about conversions. We want our websites, our newsletters, our social media posts, everything that we do to have a high conversion rate, which essentially means that a high number of people who are seeing your work click through, they become buyers, subscribers, donors, what have you. Um, but there's something that happens before they click and before they become a conversion. And that's that they need those people, those real live people need to feel seen. They need to feel understood. They need to believe that you're the person for them. They need to know you, like you, trust you. They need to be captivated and then they click. So everything comes back to this captivate methodology. And there are four aspects, brand, resonance, strategy, clarity, in that order, brand, resonance, strategy, and clarity. I'm going to talk about the first two because it's something that people can put into place today. So your brand, you can't have a conversation without knowing what you want to say. And I, and I know that sounds really obvious, <laughs> but, um, but it's incredible how often we write words that don't represent ourselves well because we think it's the right thing to do, but it isn't the right thing to do for us. So I would recommend that, that people do a free write and they ask themselves, so here's the free write, get a, a piece of paper and or a new document on your computer and write down, what do I believe in? What do I stand for? Who do I serve? Why is this important? Mm -hmm. So I'll do that again. What do I believe in? What do I stand for? Who do I serve? Why is this important? And then answer those questions. Answer them freely. Don't censor yourself. Really just let it out. Because when we give ourselves a chance, you know this as a communications professional, of course, Ralph, but when we give ourselves a chance to write freely, it's amazing the gems that we can dig up. Absolutely. And then we can go back and we can edit it. So once this is this is how you start discovering your brand. And when you know who you are, then you can start that sales conversation from a really genuine and confident place. So that's brand. That's something that people can do today is do that free, right? And then the second part of that, the second part of the brand voice is resonance. Who are you talking to? Who is your ideal audience? And we know that we change our words if we are speaking to a peer versus speaking to, say, a five-year-old. Hmm. And so knowing, getting really clear about who your people are, how they feel about their current problem. And, and I mean, that's the one that you solve. Um, and then, and then the language that they use to talk about their problems. So, and then when you use those words, that will help you connect with them on a level that is engaging for them. Mm -hmm. So again, you can do a big free, write, Get really clear about who are you talking to? Who is your ideal audience? And what, how do they describe the work that you do? I love that. So together, that's brand and resonance. They make up your brand voice. That's who you are and how you're how you talk to your people. And if you can inject that stuff into your website, I guarantee those conversions will go up. Hmm. I love that. Wow, what a what a great framework. I love frameworks because they 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 solve that problem of overwhelm. Well, I just don't know <laughs> where to begin. Well, here you go. You I mean you have just laid out for us exactly what we need to do to begin taking steps in the right direction. And I I think for a lot of people who are really good at solving a problem, this is why they're so good at communicating that to others when they really tap into it. A lot of people are solving a problem that they experienced in their own life or business. 
You already、mm-hmm. have the language. You already know what it feels like. You already know the language that your audience uses to describe the problem because you have experienced the problem. But what happens is, just like you were talking about,、uh, you, you put on this copywriter hat and you begin to crank out this mechanical stuff that doesn't fit. It's not you.、Mm-hmm. It's not your audience. And then you wonder why you're not getting the results. Do what Helen, Helen is saying. Go back, dig deep and create something that is coming from who you are. And you're going to see much better results. You can help people、uh, do this. You've got do it yourself courses. You have coaching.、Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your services to take people from self help mode to. Done for you mode to really get the results they want faster.、Mm, thanks. I, you know, the, I keep coming back to I believe that you can do this yourself. I believe that you don't have to, but I believe that you can. And a lot of us have some part of that overwhelm that we didn't talk about earlier is that a lot of us have. Hang ups about writing because of something that one English teacher said one time about an essay or what have you, that we have these hang ups about our writing. So, the vast majority of my work is in helping people figure out how to do this themselves. And I have a three month program called Copy Courage that takes people. Through the process of developing that, doing that deep dive discovery, developing that brand voice, getting clear on that content strategy so that your readers know where to go next, how to buy in, how to say yes, and all the way through to copywriting those pages for your website in a way that is resonant, that is consistent, that is clear and reinvigorates. Your website. So that's Copy Courage, and it is a lot of fun. It's super immersive. It's a community group program. So you're speaking in real time with other entrepreneurs or rebelpreneurs who are in the same place that you are and really understand the work that you're going through.、Mm, fabulous, fabulous. Well, what, this has already, I feel like, been an education、uh, for our listeners. I've got a page of notes here. You've shared so much wisdom and so much practical help that、um, I, I feel like now the best thing for me to do is to go back through my website and start, <laughs> start looking around. What have I missed? When, and, you know, maybe it's been a while. And so maybe that would be a good audit for our listeners. Go back through your, your website, your copy, and see if you're really communicating who you are, because that's, that's where the The real power is in connecting with your audience. Bearing in mind, if you're growing, you're changing, you're evolving, what made sense for you to say a year ago, two years ago, may not make sense now. Or you may have discovered something about yourself, something about your audience, or language that better expresses who you are and what you do for people. If so, have the courage to make those changes. And if you need help, Helen, how can they reach out to you and connect with you to get that help? You can find me online at communicationsdistillery.com. And、uh, that link for Copy Courage is communicationsdistillery.com slash courage. And then I'm on Instagram primarily at Helen t r a m a t h i c Perfect. Well, it, it's been a real pleasure to connect with you, Helen, and get to know you a little bit better. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you would like to leave us with? Yeah, I'd say you can do this yourself. And also, you don't have to do it alone. Perfect. So the, the option is there do it yourself, or you don't have to do it alone. And that, that's really encouraging. We need more people like you, Helen t r e m e t h i c She is a brand voice strategist and a copy coach whose values driven approach to communications helps scaling entrepreneurs and small businesses move their businesses into the next. Sphere. You can find out more at communicationsdistillery.com and we'll have that link on the Rebelpreneur website as well. Helen, thank you so much for your time. It's been a real pleasure to chat with you today. My pleasure's been mine. Thank you. 
You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.